Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another Honkai Star Rail video. Alright, if you guys are not aware, Loka's banner is coming very, very soon. Now for me, it's going to be in approximately 6 hours. That's going to be when Silver Wolf banner goes away and Loka banner comes in. Now let's talk a little bit about Loka. I'll give you guys an idea on how to build him per se and what are the best teams, rotations and also should you pull for Loka ideally before you guys you know jump into it go all happy with your pyroxines. We need to have this discussion right here. So let's jump into it. Alright so let's talk about builds first. I think that's going to be the simplest thing to talk about uh, regarding Loka right. So if you guys are not aware, light cones. Loka's light cone is going to be the best one, which is Echoes of the Coffin. So this one is going to give him a bunch of stats. You can see the best light cone uh, increase wearer's attack by 24%. If you guys are not aware yet, Loka is a bit different compared to a lot of other healers. He scales off attack percent rather than HP percent like Natasha and Bailu, right? So after the wearer uses an attack, for each different enemy target the wearer hits, regenerate 3 energy. That's not bad for Loka ideally. Each attack can regenerate energy up to 3 times this way. After the wearer uses their ultimate, all allies gain 12 speed for 1 turn. This is very very good. Alright, getting 12 speed just from a light cone uh, when you use ultimate, huge. Huge. Uh, I would say consider getting this light cone if you can afford it. That trial speed is going to change a lot of uh, a lot of your characters. They are not yet at 134 speed. That's going to boost them even further. And it's going to make a lot of characters way faster than they should. Alright, moving two turns occasionally in the MOC. Now, if you don't have this one, you're free to play. You do not plan to pull or intend to pull for this particular light cone. Totally understand what is going to be the next best option. Now in my humble opinion, I will personally go for perfect timing. I do think that this is going to be the second best option. This particular light cone gives him the effect rest by 16%. Now Loka have built in uh, effect rest on his traces all right, all together but this is going to help him a little bit extra. This goes up to 32% you can see uh, at super impose 5 right. And of course also the outgoing healing is going to increase by the amount of effect resistance that you have which is definitely going to help you a lot more than you think since like I mentioned Loka has uh, effect rest on the traces. Although there's a cap right here you can see it can only go up to 15% in terms of the outgoing healing. So that's something to keep in mind if you are trying to get this particular light cone. Now for post-op conversation I don't personally like this as much because uh, even though the regeneration rate for 8% is going to work on Loka, the increasing outgoing healing when they use the ultimate doesn't help Loka as much because if you think about it, Loka doesn't really heal based off ultimate. Loka heals based off his allies attacking the enemy. It's like a lifesteal sort of thing. So they need to move and attack. So this is not going to help Loka as much in my humble opinion. I would say Shed Feeling might be a better one because it straight up increased the outgoing healing. And when you use skill, regenerates 2 energy for all allies. I think this is going to be slightly better. Definitely helps Loka a little bit. This is going to be the third best option. Now let's talk about the relics. I do like Loka because he's very free to play friendly in terms of relics. Like it's so easy to build him. The best flexible set uh, by far this is something that I think every single player is going to go for is two pieces of Passerby of Wandering Cloud and two pieces of Musketeer of Wild Wheat. Like I mentioned, Loka heals scales off attack. So this attack percent right here and this outgoing healing 10% is going to help him. Now, if you want to, you could also go for 4 pieces of this particular one. You're going to sacrifice a little bit of healing for the extra speed 6% and also now you can do additional damage 10% for your basic attack. Now that's going to be kind of decent if you think about it. Loka might be your only imaginary character in your group and if you're trying to you know, take advantage of his typing and just try to get rid of the enemy faster, maybe this can be a bonus advantage for sure. I wouldn't go for 4 piece of this particular one. Uh, the skill point doesn't seem that useful overall in Memory of Chaos. Uh, sure, it could be decent early on but depending on how long the battle lasts, this might diminish in value uh, the longer the battle goes, right? So I would say either 4 piece of this or 2 piece of Musketeer of Wild Wheat and 2 piece of Passerby of Wandering Cloud. Another option that I can think of is also going for 2 piece of Musketeer of Wild Wheat and also you can go 2 piece of Wastelander of Bandit Tree Desert. 
Now this is going to increase your imaginary damage and like I mentioned, since Loka does imaginary damage, this is going to be much more of a hybrid build rather than a pure healing solo heal build, which I think is going to be a bit more riskier. I wouldn't go that route, but hey, I think he's pretty flexible. Now let's talk about the main stat, which is the one you want to go for. For body piece, of course, attack percent makes a lot of sense or outgoing healing boost depending on which one you want to go for. I think by far these two are going to be the much more important one. Although Loka scales off uh, att attack percent in terms of healing, outgoing healing boost is going to give you way more healing if you're just going for the dedicated healer route. This is going to help a little bit more compared to the attack percent since everything else, you will be able to get attack percent from everywhere else. Now for the boots, obviously my recommendation is going for speed. Speed makes a lot of sense. You want him uh, to be as fast as possible, but not too fast because the point here is at the end of the day, Luoka, when he casts his skill and ultimate, that's when he's able to enter the field, right? So this is going to be a uh, part of his talent. So where if anyone attacks the enemy, they basically restore a certain amount of HP. Now this is going to be a very useful skill overall. And you can see the field effect lasts for two turns. And if Loka is too fast, that means this field is going to disappear faster. So you still want Loka to perhaps be the slowest character in your team, where everyone else needs to be faster, obviously, right? So therefore, uh, all your other characters are able to maximize when them hitting the enemy, they can sort of heal themselves before Loka ends this particular effect. Now in that case, should you sacrifice speed entirely? I would say no, right? The idea here is you still need to understand that Every time Loka hits the enemy, you're still regenerating skill points. You're still able to move faster. When you move, take certain action, you're able to recharge energy. And therefore, that's going to give you that skill points to do something else uh, in return as well. So it's not... Now, as for the planner ornament synthesis, this is going to be pretty straightforward. The best one, ideally, space healing station. I think this is where the attack percent here is going to be very, very useful. All right, he's going to get up to 24% attack for this particular set alone. Now, if you can go for this one, highly recommended. And if you can't, the Fleet of Ageless perhaps is going to be the second best choice. All right, this one is going to give him the HP percent. And of course, when the wearer's speed reaches 120 or higher, everyone in the team also gets 8% bonus attack. So in my humble opinion, these two are the best one. All right, and luckily they are both farmable in World 3 if you're trying to tackle them both at once. And yeah, this is what makes Loka super flexible. Now, in terms of the orb, all right, I highly recommend going for attack percent. Yes, if you want him to do a hybrid damage, like I mentioned, imaginary damage boost might sound like a decent idea, but I will go attack percent really. Uh, attack percent just makes way more sense if you're just going for the healer Loka. All right, for the link rope, this one, you can either go for energy regeneration rate or attack percent. All right, these two are going to be the best one. I would say energy regeneration is going to help you a little bit more. If you can cast your ultimate faster, it's going to be better as well. Attack percent, I would say, would be the second priority. Now, let's talk about teams. What would be the best team to go for Loka? Now, I think Loka is going to fit very, very well with the Bronya and Sila team because this team is very, very fast. Your Sila is going to move extremely often and therefore she's going to be able to heal herself. Same applies for Bronya. Ideally, you want to go speed for Bronya anyways, right? So these two team uh, characters, they are very, very fast. I think have a lot of synergy with Loka as well. So putting Loka in this slot makes a lot of sense. You can also consider bringing an additional damage dealer, or right, something like Hook, something like maybe Blade in the future, that's going to give a lot of synergy as well. Now, do you need a preservation character or a tank to help you? Uh, I would say it depends, right? I think in the higher floor of the Memory of Chaos, yes, it's going to help you a little bit uh, just to be safe. Something like March 7 or the Fire Trailblazer is still going to help you a ton just to ensure survivability because as someone that has reached up to floor 9 and floor 10 for the previous season of Memory of Chaos, Damn, it's not about the heals anymore. The enemy literally one-shots you. They literally just one-shot you. Uh, my Sushen get one-shotted multiple times during my run at the memory of floor, at the memory of Chaos Floor 10. So that's something to consider. Uh, having Loka, sure, you can heal and stuff. But the truth is, if your character dies in one hit, there's no room for you to heal. Alright, you're just gonna die. 
and Luoka has no ability to revive your character. Now in that case, Bailu might perhaps be better, but I'm pretty certain if you want to be safe, consider one preservation character or consider something like a destruction character that can help you a little bit uh, that's not too squishy, right? Now you could also perhaps run a Silver Wolf and Sila team. Obviously, if you don't have Sila, feel free to swap her out with Ching Chue. That's going to work as well. I don't think that the synergy here uh, with Luoka in the middle, I don't think that with Luoka in this team, uh, everyone here is going to be able to benefit and sustain themselves easily. Granted, you might have to try to level 80 them because Silver Wolf and Sila can be quite squishy as well. I do think that Loka is ideally very flexible. Uh, alongside with Natasha, alongside with Bailu, he fits almost in every team. All right? I don't think there's one scenario where you can say Loka is bad in that team, which is what makes him really, really good. All right? He's going to have an inherent value being a healer overall. Now, am I pulling for Loka? Sad to say that I don't really need Loka per se. Alright, right now, if you guys are not aware, I did pull for Jopat. And I'm still going to pull, but not for Loka. I'm going to try to get Tingyan perhaps. Uh, maybe get an early copy and test her out because she seems like a fun character based on what I can observe. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. Subscribe, give this video a like. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.